Now, I'm just going to pray real quick. Um, I want you guys to repeat after me because we're gonna we want to receive revelation. So we're just gonna do this prayer together, okay? Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to open my eyes to see, my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my ears to hear, and my heart to receive, and my heart to receive revelation, revelation, understanding, understanding, and inspiration, and inspiration from your word, from your word through the message today. I thank you in advance. I thank you in advance. Amen. Amen. Ooh, that was good. Praise the Lord. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Wow. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Mm, wow. Praise the Lord. I just, you know, heaven isn't another. You don't have to go any other place to be in heaven because you're there right now. If you're in Christ, you are in heaven. Amen. And, uh, the reality of where you're at right now is it's it's a reality. Is we're not talking theory, we're not talking this is just a reality, you know. Right. Um, Colossians three, you know, we're, we are already we <laughs> we are already there. You know, we we just gotta set our minds, our, our hearts and our minds, we just set our hearts and our minds where Christ is because that's that's where we're at. Right. You know, that's that's where we're at. And um, there's a veil, there's a veil, let's call it a veil, between the physical reality, and it's not even a veil, it's just a, it's just a, it's a veil in our ex- experiential understanding of it, in our experience of it, but there's a, there is a very thin, very, very, very thin uh, barrier between us and in the heavenly reality, where our, where our spirit is with Christ, and there are times when we come together in a corporate setting where you can feel that heavenly reality coming coming through. But that's our reality. Was we're always there. The more we set our hearts in the heavenly realm, like Colossians 3 tells us, the more we can set our minds there, the more, more heavenly-minded we become, the more heavenly manifestation we'll walk in. You know, and, and this isn't just for Sunday mornings. This is for Monday mornings. You know, this is for Tuesday evenings. This is for all the time. And there's, a, there's it's such a thin, permeable barrier. barrier. You can just kind of go reach right through the other side because... On the other side, in the heavenly realms, we've already been given every blessing. Every, every blessing is already in our possession. The Lord said, let them know they already have it. Now, you already have it. Wow. You already have it. I read this whole book, and we already won. Okay? <laughs> it's, uh, we... we we already won. Like, it's, it's already done. God's word is forever settled in heaven. The high and lofty one that, that lives in eternity. Yes. All right? So we got to get this perspective that we are, you know, we are, in, we are in eternity right now. We are in eternity right now. That's where we live is in eternity. God's word is forever settled in heaven. All right? You... you he chose you in Christ Jesus before the foundations of the world were already laid. That's what the scripture has told us. It's very clear. So that was, that was, he already took you back before he lost you. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, so in eternity, he never lost you. He already had possession of you. Yeah. Christ already had possession of you. He was just waiting for you to come around to the awareness. <laughs> you know, he, he already was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth were even laid. Yeah. When Jesus was on the earth, he was just walking out what was already settled in heaven. Okay? Jesus was walking out what had already been settled in eternity before the foundations were even laid. So he was, he's here walking it out. Where are we? We're here walking it out. Well, we want to know, we just go to the Bible, and God's Word tells us, wow, we've already been blessed with every spiritual blessing. 
I, I'm not, I, I don't need to wait for God to decide to heal me because his word's already settled in heaven. I am already healed. Amen. He has an abundant supply set aside just for me and just for you already because Jesus has already walked it out. Yes. You know, it, was, it was done before the foundations were even laid, but 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came and he went to the cross and he took your sin he took your condemnation. He took your guilt. He took your shame. He took your sickness. He took your poverty. He took your depression. He took your anxiety. He took your fear. And he put it up there and he nailed it to the tree. <laughs> Amen. And, and then he came out of the tomb three days later. Completely victorious. Completely victorious. When he was on, when he was on the cross... The devil was thinking he was winning, but the devil was losing <laughs> so badly, so badly. And when Jesus came off that, when Jesus was put in that tomb, he was down in, he was kicking the devil's behind for, uh, forever. It's forever settled. Like, we won. We just got to walk it out. There is w- one place right now where we get to live by faith, and that's here. <laughs> Amen. When we go to heaven, we don't need faith anymore. You know, and and we're already there. (laughs) Think about that. We're already there. Our faith is only useful here. Because we got to believe God and take him at his word right now. He's already got it. He's got heaven covered. Like when we we depart this life, God doesn't need you to have faith anymore. Because you're there. Fully. Right. Like we've got a limited time opportunity. Amen. Wow, we've got a limited time opportunity here to walk in faith and to please God. Because when we walk in faith, we please him because he gets to let his will come to pass. Because the only way his will happens here is when we believe it and we walk it in faith. It's not an automatic thing. You'll be like, oh, well, if God wills it, it's going to happen. Oh, brother. That doesn't make any sense at all. Scripture, like it doesn't make any sense. Like you have to believe God's word for it to work. You have to walk in faith right now because this is the only opportunity. We have a limited time opportunity to walk in faith. And it's here. This is the only place he needs your participation. Because his will doesn't automatically come to pass. That's why he wants to work through you and me. And when we, when we walk in the fullness of, of, of his word, we're going to see the fullness of the manifestation of his word. You know, I hear people say things like, well, the Lord's coming back any day. And I say, oh, I hope not. We've got a lot, a, lot, a lot of stuff left to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Says, Man, there's a lot of people out there that need to hear about Jesus. There's a lot of people that need to get, to get set free. Yes. Man, we've got, we got a lot of awesomeness to see accomplished in this world here, yeah. you know. And, and we have, uh, like, eternity is a long time, from what I understand, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's a long time. We have eternity to enjoy and eternity to, to, to just, you know, get our doctrine straightened out. You know, we got, oh, Judy was right about that song. Well, praise the Lord. You know, I mean, we got... <laughs> Oh, I know I understand what Gary meant. You know, we got, we, got a, we got a long time to figure this stuff out. We got a short faith window here. Yes. We got a short faith window. And as, as, we, as we set our hearts and our minds in the heavenly realm, and we set our belief in God's word and, and make it unshakable, like unshakable. If his word says I'm healed, I'm healed. Come on. You know, if his word says I'm prospered, I'm prospered. Yeah. That's it. Like he, like, he literally, he has an abundant supply. Okay, Ephesians 3, verse 14. 14. Mm, praise the Lord. I really did not know if I was going to be able to stand up and walk over here. Man. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 3, verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, 
to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints the breadth the, and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond. That is quite the statement. Far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Woo! Woo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I got to tell you some funny stuff. Uh, some just is retrospect, man. You look back and you say, wow, Lord, I guess I underestimated you. <clears throat> so uh, John Deal is uh, not here this morning, but um, he did a little research on my last name, Freevault, Freevault, Freevault. Uh, you know what that actually means? The name means open heaven. Okay. So I've been, a, yeah, free, open, vault, firmament. My name means open heaven. I've been walking around with the name open heaven my whole life, wondering, oh, Lord, do I have an open heaven over me? Is there an open heaven over me? Oh, I wish I had an open heaven over me. Well, he gave me this name. I was wow. born with it. It was, like, super obvious. Wow. Now, okay. <laughs> like, John's like, do you know your name means open heaven? I'm like, what? Free vault? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Like, there's, like... <laughs> There's some things that we've been walking around with for a long time where we don't even, aren't even aware, you know? And I'll, that pertains so much to our salvation. Like, we're saved, you're saved, you put your faith in the Lord, but there's so much more. Far more beyond what we can ask or think. So, <laughs> when, um, when God called him <laughs> into ministry, Called, you know, told Melissa and I that we were going into ministry. I said, oh, Melissa, don't worry. The Lord will not let us starve. I had just above starvation faith. It's true. Like, I, I believed God would not let us starve because he is faithful. He won't let you starve, and he won't let the kids starve. I might have to go hungry occasionally, but he will not let us, will not let the whole family starve, and I will not die from malnutrition. That was my level of faith, okay? Wow. So get this. Prior to me going into ministry, Melissa and I, we had a fairly, a, a nice, we lived comfortably. I had a nice income. I was, I was doing very well for myself and for, for family. And, but when God becomes my source... <laughs> <laughs> like I would, like if I was working, if I was not in ministry, like I expected to make six figures. Like that was my expectation. Like nothing less. Like that's what I make. I make six figures. Now I'm in ministry. Oh, we're not going to starve, honey. Because <laughs> I believed God cared for my families <laughs> less than I did. Oh my gosh, isn't that horrible? Wow. Let's really think about that. You know, hey, if, if I'm if I'm our supply. We're going, to do, we're going to do pretty well. If God is our source, we're not going to starve. <laughs> think, I mean, seriously, let's think about this. I know I'm talking about myself here, but I'm also talking about some of you. <laughs> Guess what? We didn't starve. Praise <laughs> He met us where we were at. <laughs> but even in that, he's still, like, he's still, like, man, he still came through so, in so many ways. You know, that first... Melissa made a third of what I made when I, when, I, and I, when I went from making a bunch of money to zero income, okay, zero income. In fact, we spent thousands of dollars on our ministry, what the Lord had called us to do in the first year, like, just going out. <clears throat> Why? 
Well, not quite all of it, just what we could get our hands on. There was some stuff we couldn't get to. <laughs> Praise God for those retirement accounts. You can't really get in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that was, where, that was where I was at. I have to say you were probably at a little bit higher than that, right? <laughs> okay, that was a little bit. But that's where I was at. And, and, and here's, but, it, but it's like, was that God's, was that God's will? No, I don't, I, looking back, I'm like, oh Lord, we did this the hard way. Um, but that's where my faith was at. And so that's, that's what I was able to receive. But even in that, but even in that time, like Melissa's faith, I, I believe was, she believed, you know, she, I'm, and I'm like, Copeland who? Who is this guy? What are you talking about? Well, it might be the devil. Stay away. Um, <laughs> But we, 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 didn't, we never stopped giving, never stopped tithing, we, you know, believe, believe, believe. And, um, and then, like, literally, like, Melissa's income went up, doubled, triple, quadruple, somewhere close, somewhere between triple. And, but anyway, her income just went, because her faith was up there. Wow. My income was like, <laughs> it was like zero, and then it kind of didn't go any lower than that. We kind of hit the, <laughs> we just stayed right there. We didn't go lower. And eventually... When all the savings was gone, we stopped spending money out of our savings account. It was great. Um, <laughs> so that's what I stopped too. Like I said, praise the Lord, I couldn't get to those retirement funds. We did not go into debt. But here's the crazy part, okay? Even though my faith wasn't quite, quite there yet, like within that first two years, like, okay, I went, I have a zero income. All of a sudden, we buy, like our, our Mazda at the time was new. You know, it was a t- 2012. We bought it in 2012. We bought it with cash. Paid for it in cash. We refinanced our house from a, was it, we were at a 15 year, we went to a 10 year. And I wasn't making as much as everybody. And she wasn't making, like stuff happened that we have to, we were scratching our heads saying, how is this happening? How is this happening? You know, stuff happened, you know, beyond what we could ask or think, okay? He was operating beyond, especially me. My ask was, don't let me starve. Please, Lord, love my children as much as I do, you know. Um, cause I, th- that was my, that was my thought. Like if I'm in ministry, this is going to be pretty bad. <laughs> you know what I thought about being a pastor? I thought it was going to be awful. How was our first year as being pastors, honey? Was it pretty awful? Oh, it was awful for me. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I, was, I lived my reality. The first year in ministry was awful. I'm, as a pastor, it was worse than the two years prior. I was like begging God. I'm like, oh, Lord, I repent for every evil word I spoke about a pastor. I have learned my lesson. If you let me out of this, I will dedicate my life to ministering pastors. I will travel around the world, and I will hug them, and I will pray for them. I will do whatever you tell me to do. Am I making this up? Like, Lord, I, I, I repented like every day, like, multiple times a day. Because that's what I believed for. Wow. And we had, a change, we, we had a change in mindset as we went along. Now I think pastor in this church is like the most exciting thing ever. Like, this is awesome. Like, I, I get so excited to come up here. Like, I shake sometimes. Like, the night before. <laughs> I can't wait to preach tomorrow morning. Oh. Am I making that up? Okay. Like, if I still thought this was awful, guess what I'd be having? This would be awful. But it's not awful. It's awesome. Amen. Okay? Amen. Be- beyond all you can ask or think. Okay? Yeah. So what the Lord <laughs> spoke to me a while back, I was like, well, you need to raise your asking and thinking because I want to do beyond that. Yeah. But you're asking me to not let your kids die from starvation. <laughs> I have a bigger purpose than that. I, th- wh- like, th- can you bring your trust up just a little bit? You know, and praise the Lord for Melissa because... She was somehow, I don't know, got out ahead of me on this again. I don't know <laughs> when it came to the, 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 the believing God for more. You believe in God for more. You just believe in God for the, the more. Um, last year, I was mowing my lawn. And I, I said, to, I, oh, tell me with this. Did the, when did we lay our bills on the table and put our hands on them? When was that? I can't quite remember. Was that this year? Two thousand. Okay, so let. We're in twenty nineteen right now, honey. 
We haven't gotten a lot of sleep in the last eight days, just so you know. The four of us in a little room, hotel room. It was a nice hotel room, but it's pretty little when you got four people in one. We had two beds, praise the Lord. And two little kids, and one of them in bed with each of us. Oh, praise the Lord. My Eva's like doing kung fu while she's sleeping. Poo! Oh. Daddy, why can't I sleep on the floor? Yes, you can. Oh, I got it. It's back in bed. Bam! Wow, that was a great front kick, honey. Oh. Um, so when was that? Two, th- early 2000. Early 2018, okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so I hear Bill Winston say, he laid his bills on the kitchen table, put his hands on them, and said, I command these bills to go away in Jesus' name, I will be debt free. And I, so we did it, right? We, uh, Melissa's like, we're doing it. Uh, she's like, I heard it, and I said, hey, listen to this, this is pretty cool. And she's like, let's do it. And I'm like, oh, you want to do it? <laughs> I just thought that was a cool story from Bill Winston. I didn't really think we were going to do it. Like, okay. She lays them on the table, and she's like, come on. And I like, lay our hands on these bills, and we just say, we just canceled them all in the name of Jesus. These bills are going to be gone. Called it paid and done, canceled, Lord, whatever you want to do. We're, we're just, these bills are gone. Okay, so that's 2018. Um, Include our mortgage, like all the bills, everything, student loan, mortgage, everything, gone. Praise the Lord. So then a few months later, that was early in, the, that was probably like January, February. So it's lawn mowing season, so I'm like deep in thought, mowing my lawnmower and praying, because that's what I do, mow my lawn and pray. And I said, Lord, I know you want us to be debt free, yeah, but I think you want us to have an air conditioner in our house. Because <laughs> our furnace is like, 30-some years old, and our air conditioner had stopped working three years ago, praise the Lord. <laughs> and um, some nights were hard to sleep without air conditioning, but I'm not complaining. I'm, <laughs> I'm above starvation faith, but I'm not above, like, air con- I, don't, I, have, I don't have air-conditioned faith yet. Um, so, <laughs> so I said, Lord, what do you want us to do this year? Do you want us to pay off the mortgage, or do you want us to get the air conditioner? Because air conditioners are really expensive. And if we get an air conditioner, we got a new furnace, so that's really expensive in the mortgage. We know how much the mortgage is, and that's really big. And of course, you have such a limited supply set aside for me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not praying. You know, in retrospect, that's what I'm thinking somewhere in my mind. Because if I wasn't thinking that way, I wouldn't be asking that. Okay? I can t- you can tell what you're thinking by what you're asking. So I'm asking God a question that really reflects what I'm thinking. If you say, well, that, is that what you're thinking? I say, of course not. I have an abundant supply. That's why I'm asking for this much. Because he couldn't do this much. He, he can't do both. You know, he can't do this and, and this. It's like, oh, Lord, which one are we, we going to do? Because you can't do both. And that's what I'm asking him. And he says both. And I said, whoa, both. But I know more now than I used to. So I just say, okay, <laughs> okay. I remember the year before I was mowing my lawn and <laughs> mowing my lawn and I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little frustrated and, and, I, and the Lord's just bringing back to remembrance all of the miracles I've seen. Like we've seen, like we've seen so many miracles. We've seen multiple, multiple sclerosis healed. Like boom, people got, boom, healed, healed right here in, in this city. Okay. We, we, I remember one time Melissa laid her hands on somebody who had this big lump under the back and back the and it disappeared, you know? And she's like, wow, did you see that? And I'm like, uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like we, you know, cross scene, going out and ministering to homeless people across the street at the park, and they're like, holy, you know, my back is completely healed, you know? I mean, we've seen miracle after miracle, blind eyes, deaf ears. Blind eyes, deaf ears, yep, I got that right. Um, the miracle after miracle, you know? <laughs> All kind, I mean, seriously, we, we've seen it. And I'm pushing, the Lord's just bringing all this, and I say, Lord, miracles don't pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, boom, and he just hits me, and there's the, I, I wasn't asking for it, and I didn't want to see it, and there's the fish, and there's a coin coming out of his mouth, and he said, oh, yeah? And I said, whoa, thank you, Jesus. Wow. Miracles pay the bills. And that's why I guess I can repent it. I said, wow, okay, Lord. And then after that, we started entering into a, se- a season where my, I was having to expand my thinking because my asking was so far off. So then, so that was the next, that's two lawn mowers, two lawn mowing seasons ago. Last year's lawn mowing season, which one do you want, Lord? Because I know miracles can pay the bills, but only one at a time, okay? And so, <laughs> so when he says both, I say, what? If 
For real? Okay, okay. We're not, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> and I don't even know. Like, I don't even know. Like, it's like, he just, like, we say, okay. And so I say, this is what the Lord says. This is what we're going to do. And we're going to believe for it. And we just put our faith out and we believe for it. All of our debts got canceled, or not canceled, canceled, paid for, however you want to say it, 100% gone. Our mortgage is paid for. We have a new furnace, a new air conditioner in our house. We owe, yeah, but money came in. Money came in. You know, and I'm, I might think, I love you guys, but I'm just going to say, like, the, God's, you're not my supply. Like, he just gives it to you however he can get it to you. You know what I mean? He just gives it to you, you know. And, and it was like, wow. And, and money just was there. Like, money we didn't even know was there was there. <laughs> kind of like I didn't even know when my last name meant open heaven, but it's been that since I was born. But money, like stuff we didn't even realize was already sitting there, was already there. Wow. And, and he, did, he, just, he just wiped out the, the debts were gone. Our mortgage is paid for. Um, we have a new air conditioning and furnace in our house. We have zero debt. And this has been since last September. Last September we've been walking 100% debt free. Wow. Like, wow. So, yeah. And, wow. and the Lord is saying, like, beyond all you can ask or think. Because if you're, what are you, what are you asking for? Because what you're asking for is, is really a deter- determining, is going to tell you what you're really thinking. Because when I'm asking, Lord, which one do you want, this or this, well, why am I thinking that? Well, I'm thinking that because I think I have an, a limited supply available to me. And because I'm thinking that, I have a limited supply available to me, okay? But as we, as we read in this verse here in Ephesians... Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think. According to the power that works within us. So as I, as I walk forward, I need to let the power of God work within me. How do I let the power of God work within me? I, I plant his word in me. So I plant the word of God in me, and I sow the seed of the word, okay? I sow the seed of the word, and I continue to sow the seed of the word, and I continue, like if I need to, if I need to receive healing in my body, I need to sow healing scriptures into me, okay? And I continue to sow those scriptures into me, and I continue to sow those scriptures into me, and I am going to reap a harvest of healing, Okay, the word says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You will reap a harvest in due season if you don't give up. So there's there's a point in here where we could give up. And when we give up, we're not gonna reap a harvest. We're not gonna see those things come to pass that we were believing for. But when you sow it in faith, and I'm talking, I'm talking about sowing the word of God in faith, sowing the word of God in faith. And, and sometimes, I'll tell you what, well, sometimes, man, you know, oh. yeah. in retrospect, most of the time I've done it like this, I, I think I believe a scripture, so I start to sow it in, I start to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe for this, I'm going to believe for this. And as I start to meditate on that word and sow that word and, and declare that word of myself, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. So as I'm declaring and, 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 and believing that scripture, they're, like, I'm looking at it, and I'm seeing 1% of that word. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and as, as, I, as I continue to meditate on that word and continue to sow that and, and, and declare that word, I get closer and closer to that precious promise of God. And it becomes more and more of a reality to me because, <clears throat> okay, Verse 17, Ephesians 3, 17, it says, ah, thank you, Jesus, I'm going to slow it down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Take a drink of water. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Okay, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Okay, Jesus is the living word. Okay, he is the living word. He is the word manifest. As I sow the word and I manifest that word, faith comes through hearing, hearing comes through the word, that word is becoming an increasing reality in my life, okay? The word, the manifestation of that word, and that word is the inner man, okay? We're, we're talking, this is a passage about your inner man, be strengthened in your inner man. My inner man is being built up, 
okay, through the word. My inner man is being built up. My inner man is being built up. My outer man might be saying, which one do you want, Lord? But my inner man is saying, oh, I'm coming out. (laughs) Come on. on. Just keep keep pushing that lawnmower and just say, okay, okay, Lord. (laughs) My outer man is mowing the lawn saying, oh, okay, Lord, we'll see how this is going to work. My inner man is saying, yes, thank you, Jesus. So my inner man is being built up. My inner man is being strengthened. Colossians 3, my inner man who knows he's seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus is being strengthened. And and, God, and Jesus Christ, who is in me and in you as a believer, he is in you, okay? But this verse is, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. There is a manifestation of Jesus. When you meditate on the word, there is a manifestation of Jesus in your inner man, yes. okay? There is a manifestation. What you are on the inside, you are going to attract to the outside, okay? So if I believe I'm going to be sick, I am going to attract sickness, Okay? If I believe I'm going to be well, I'm going to attract wellness. Wow. Okay? If I believe I'm going to be impoverished, I attract poverty. If I believe I'm going to be prosperous, I attract prosperity. Because my inner man is being built up in Christ Jesus. And Jesus is dwelling in me through my inner man. And when, I, when my faith gets through that permeable barrier between heaven and earth... By faith, we access the heavenly realm, and we draw that into our reality. You know, we draw that into we draw that into our present tense, because it is already done in the heavenly realm. And the Lord is saying, whatever we've been asking or thinking, we need to bring it up to a higher level, higher level. You know, sometimes, and I've seen this with. Like I've, you know, Andrew, Andrew Womack talks about it, but I've, I've seen this where somebody will come and say, oh, you know, I, I, yeah, I would do, do an altar call for healing. Um, I remember one time I was at this church up north and I said, oh, the Lord wants to heal people. Come on up to the front. People came up and this guy comes up there and he's like, well, I got this wrong and this wrong and this wrong, but uh, I really don't think the Lord wants to heal me. I've been prayed for before. Uh, let's try again. So let me ask him. Lord, do you want to heal him? I said, oh, I think I heard a yes. Let me pray. <laughs> you know? and, so, wow. and so we prayed. But he, he really thought the Lord only wanted to heal one thing or another thing. And sometimes people come up and they'll say, and he, he, by the way, he did get completely healed. Okay? He got completely 100% wow. healed. But I hear people say, oh, well, I got a pain in my back and a pain in my knee, and I got a headache. Will you pray for my headache? You're okay with the pain in the back and the knee? I love the way Andrew says it. He's like, right, because the lights in heaven might dim if we pray for all three. (laughs) We don't want to do that. The lights in heaven might dim. So let's just, which one do you want? Which one are we going to do, Lord? Are you going to heal my headache or are you going to heal my back? Because I know there's a limited, this verse does not say there is a limited supply. So keep your asking and your thinking in line. Now to him who is able to do far more, so far more, abundantly, beyond all that you can ask or think, according to the power that works in you. So we got to let this power, this Christ, the Christ Jesus dwell by faith in our inner man, we got to let that happen. Because when we let the the manifestation of Jesus through the precious promises of Scripture begin to build up our inner man and build up who we are on the inside, we're not going to think, oh, man, I hope I don't starve, Lord. I know you got the kids taken care of. You know what I mean? Beyond what you can ask or think. So you better start raising your expectations to line up with what you can ask or think. Okay? If you can ask it and you can think it, he can do beyond it. (laughs) Judy got it. If you can ask it and you can think it, 
he can do beyond it. And will. You have to ask it and think it so he can do beyond it. So we have to raise our expectations to line up with what we're asking and thinking. Because I can ask for something and not expect to get it. I have to raise my expectations. One word for expectation is desire. Okay? Mark 11. Whatsoever you desire. Whatsoever you desire. What is your expectation? Because you don't... In life, and this is true for everybody across the board, believers, non-believers, you will not get what you want. You will get what you expect. Whatsoever you desire. Okay? Whatsoever you desire. I can want to have a good day. I can want to be happy as a pastor. But if I expect being a pastor to be like the worst job in the entire world, how much fun am I going to have being a pastor? If I want my wife to be happy, but I expect that pastor's wives are (laughs) the most unhappy wives in the world, how happy is my wife going to be? I can want something, but expect the opposite. But as we let (laughs) Christ dwell in us by faith through his word, he's going to change the way we think. And and he's saying, raise your expectations. Raise what you're asking and thinking to line up with my word because I'm going to do beyond that. Because if you can ask it and you can think it, I can do more. If we can ask it and think it, he can do beyond it. The limiting factor in this equation is not on his end. There's only a couple of parts to this thing. There's asking, thinking, and then there's this expectation, desire, and then there's manifestation. He's got the manifestation part. It's him. He's already done it. (laughs) It's good news. (laughs) It's already done. Your healing, your deliverance, your prosperity, your abundant supply is already set aside. But Romans 12, 2, Romans 12, 1 and 12, 2, and go back to Romans chapter 11. He ends Romans chapter 11 by talking about all these things that God does by grace. All these things. He renews your youth. He brings you abundance. He just, and he just, and he just keeps talking about... <clears throat> All these things that are available by grace, by grace, by grace, by grace, by grace, by grace, by grace. And then he says, now therefore, brethren, (laughs) by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice that we may prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. God needs you to let him prove his will through your physical manifestation. (laughs) Okay. As in Romans 12, as we renew our minds to the precious promises of Scripture, Romans 12, 2 says that we are no longer going to be conformed to this world system, but we become transformed by renewing our minds according to the Word of God. And that's when the manifestation of these things happen. Romans chapter 11 talks about this, of the abundance. That's why Paul, Paul says, now therefore... Like, man, now that we've seen that God doesn't give you what you deserve, it's his grace, and you just receive it by faith. So therefore, present your body. You know, sometimes we think of a living sacrifice. Well, the only problem with a living sacrifice is that it gets up off the altar before you get to stab it. I've heard that message. <laughs> He's saying, yield yourself to God's grace. Receive his unlimited supply by faith. So that people can look at you and say, Judy, are you sure that that really happened? Did you just move into a... Wow, you must be yielding yourself as a living sacrifice. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> Honey, did we, really, did we really pay off all of our debts? Like, miraculously? Did that just really happen last year? We must be yielding our finances as a living sacrifice. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? Wow. As we renew our minds, we get to yield our lives as living sacrifices so that we're not the one trying to do the work. Wow. Okay? Jeez. We're not the one trying to make all the money. We're not the one believing that we're going to get breakthrough because it's, a, it's our self-effort. But we're believing that we're going to get exactly what God's word says we're going to get. Come on. Yes. Melissa said it. She said, God will not break his word. This is a covenant promise that we are in. He's not going to violate his word. He is just waiting for us to say it and believe it and declare it and stand in faith and to continue to receive that revelation and the manifestation because we don't give up. We're going to reap that harvest. We're going to reap that harvest and we're going to continue to reap that harvest because we are in a time of manifestation. Yes. Okay? That's where we're at. We're in a time of manifestation. We're in a time of God being able to to work through us at a level that we have never seen before, okay? Because we are, in a, we are in a fellowship, we are in a community where you can listen to a Bill Winston all week long, and I'm not going to come here, you're not going to come here on a Sunday morning, and I'm going to try to preach it out of you, okay? You can listen to a Kenneth Copeland and Andrew Womack, and, then you're not, you're gonna, you're gonna, and you don't have to worry about, oh, I better not go to church this Sunday, because my pastor is going to try to convince me that this isn't true, okay? Wow. That's, that's not your environment, you're surrounded by people right here, right now, that are saying, yes, in the name of Jesus, we're going to see this. Amen. We're going to see this breakthrough. You get, to, you, get to go to, you get to participate in, in teachings. You get to participate in Bible studies. You get to come to men's events, ladies' events, where people are saying, yes. you're going to get that abundant supply. You're going right. to get right. what's been set aside That's for you right. since the foundation of the earth come were on. laid. Yes. Because God is not a man yes. that he should lie. Yes. <laughs> okay? Yes. God is not a man that he should lie. He is not up there in heaven saying, oh, they're believing me. What am I going to do now? I didn't think anybody was going to believe that verse. Oh, I, yeah. Man, who gave that guy the name Free Vault? He actually believes it. We gave that right. Oh, what are we going to do? Father's not wringing his hands looking at the son. Did you pay for that already? Well, did you settle that on the cross? Because he knows it's already done. Yeah. You know, think about it. Jesus became poor so we wouldn't have to live in poverty. Yep. Like the king of heaven, the king of heaven. Jesus is the king of heaven and he always has been. The king of heaven, the creator. All things were brought forth. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And all things were created by him and through him. Puts himself on the tree naked, takes the beating and the punishment and every, mm, everything upon himself. There is nothing left for us to do except believe the word. That's it. There is nothing left for us to do except believe the word and sow the word. Believe the word. Stand in faith raise our expectations to line up with the word of God. Raise our asking and thinking to line up with the word of God. That's it. That's it. The father doesn't have to look at the son and say, is that covered? They're, they're, they're believing that their debts are going to get canceled. Did you, did you get everybody? Everybody. <laughs> Wait. Those people in the back row are believing for healing. Jesus did you heal everybody or just the people in the front row? <laughs> everybody, even the people watching on live stream. Come on. Everybody, healing, deliverance, prosperity. Yes. Yes. Everybody, wholeness, yes, Lord. relationships restored. Yes. It's already been done. Yes. We already won. The book is already written. It's already settled for eternity. Judy, you want to come up? Yeah. So there's one thing. There's a lot of things, but one thing I just want to share with you this morning before I get into my message. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Man, they have long messages at the Believers Conference. Long messages. But 
One thing. <laughs> that girl's got a voice, man. She is anointed. Pra- praise the Lord. Man, she is even she even cries in tune, man. That is awesome. <laughs> um, but here's the, here's the thing. Like we have, Melissa and I have come to the realization that we're literally just getting started. We are just getting started. We just got our toe in the pool, man. You, uh, you just wait and see what the Lord's going to do. <laughs> you just wait and see what the Lord is going to do. But, you know, he, for, compare, uh, looking back at what he's already done and where I've been at, it's like, wow. Talk about beyond what I've been asking or thinking. So I can't even imagine what he's about to do. In, in, in our lives, in your lives, in this church, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to boggle the natural mind. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're, we are part of a completely different system. We are not in this world. We're in it, but we're not of it, okay? We are, we are in the kingdom of heaven right now. And we walk by faith and not by sight. But because we walk by faith and not by sight, you're going to see the manifestation of every good thing God's promised us. So let's just all stand up right now. I just want to bless you. Babe, why don't you come on? um, I mean, Pastor Melissa, why don't you come on up here with them? Yeah, with the mic. Go with the mic. This is, I just want to pray a blessing over everybody. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can put this on. Yeah, Lord Jesus, I love you so much, and I thank you so much for that privilege and the honor to be standing here this morning. I thank you for putting this place together, Lord. I thank you for assembling this, this congregation. I thank you for assembling a group of people who are not afraid to enter the promised land and to take the land. I thank you for a group of people that know the giants have been working for them and that they are about to walk into their inheritance, Lord. I thank you for putting together a a body of believers who are being transformed and not conformed. I thank you for putting together this group of men and women, this group, these families together as one family of victory and for us to walk in the fullness of the manifestation of your glory and your divine purpose right now, right now in Jesus' name. And I just declare the goodness and the blessing and the favor of the Lord over each and every person here. Jesus. And I just speak breakthrough over your finances right now in Jesus' name. I just break that off of you right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, Lord, we share the testimony of our financial breakthrough, of getting just beyond out of debt, completely 100% freedom. And, and how supernatural that Amen. was for us. That we just stepped out in faith with you, Lord. And we've been walking in faith in our finances for a number of years, God. And we decided to throw it all in the bucket. <laughs> and then <laughs> you, you remembered oh, the seed. <laughs> you, so I just say do it again. We shared our testimony. So I just speak over every person in this place and every person in the sound of my voice. And I just say do it again, Lord. Thank you, Lord do it again and again and again and again and again. Multiply that seed of faith for finances in the hearts of every person in the sound of my voice right now, Lord. And just do that miracle again in Jesus' name. Yeah, and and I just want to say this. This is so clear. Like, the Lord does not miss a seed that was sown. You may have sown a seed years ago. You may have you may have been sowing the scripture in for decades. You may have you whatever the seed has been sown, the Lord knows that seed is sown. The harvest is coming. Okay, it may not be from the place you you, you you thought it was coming, but the harvest is coming. The harvest is coming. You may have sown in one place, but you're gonna reap it in another because the, the seed has been sown into the kingdom. Okay, you may have sown it over here and you're gonna reap it over here because it all belongs to the kingdom. Okay, so expect the harvest. There have been, there's been, some of you have been sowing faithfully and, 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 and believing for, for different things, and you think, wow, I. That, I that's done that's no the lord says no 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 i am not a man do not be deceived i am not mocked you will reap a harvest 
you will reap that healing. You will see that deliverance in your family. You will see that financial breakthrough in your family. In Jesus' name, there is no wasted seed in the kingdom of heaven. Not a one. Amen. Another thing the Lord showed us was we had sown. We had sown mm. in some different areas and different, you know, I'm, I'm going to say it, different people. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, uh, and then you, that got cut off. Mm. It got stolen. It got cut off. It got taken away. And we were, it, I mean, that was painful. This was a number of years ago. And, uh, but the Lord told us this week, he said, I have not forgotten the seed that you sown. <laughs> and, oh, and, and those people will reap good things from the good seed you've sown in their heart and you have already reaped. Amen. Where you have not sown. Amen. And he has shown us <laughs> where even we sowed into these things and these people and even though Satan stole that from us, the Lord gave us abundantly more over here Amen. for the seed Amen. that we had sown. Amen. So Thank just you, I want that to be a word of encouragement. If you've sown and, and the devil has stolen that, Satan has stolen that, God is saying the same thing to you. No, I haven't forgotten that seed. Amen. It's there. And it's good seed because it's from me. It's my word. It's, it's what I told you to do. That time, that money, yeah. that w whatever it is you've sown. Wow. Jesus. And if you... <laughs> He, you may have already reaped, started reaping the harvest, and he'll show you where that is. And if you haven't, you will. Yeah, I just really feel like <clears throat> there's some people here in particular. Maybe you're watching. Maybe you're here right now. Maybe you're going to be watching later. Um, there's a, you've made a large investment in your time, and you really feel like that the thief has stolen that from you. You, you spent a lot of time working on some different things, and that did not come to pass. And you're just like, that season is over. I thought there was I thought there was going to be more there. You will receive a, an abundant supply, all right? You will receive you are going to reap where you did not sow. You are going to all the time you sowed into God's kingdom, all the things that you've done, it's not over. Amen. It's not over. It's not over. You will you will see your harvest. You will see your harvest. You're going to see it soon. And you might already be in that harvest and just not realizing that. Wait a minute. This is why this is happening? Now? Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. <laughs> Amen. Jesus, thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Mm, praise the Lord. Wow. It's harvest time. <laughs> it's harvest time. It's harvest time. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> 